your eminences, your excellences, priests, religious men and women, our lay faithful, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today on the 16th Sunday of the Ordinary Time, we celebrate the Word of God that he encourages us to be faithful, to be generous, to remain steadfast, and also believing in the power of the gospel. The first reading from the book of Genesis, Abraham is visited by three men, three signifying the completeness as he is resting at his residence at the Oaks of Menre. He receives them and he prepares a meal for them. And they are gladdened by his heart of generosity. And this is the perspective of an African heart. In our homes, when our parents receive visitors, it is our mothers hurrying up to the kitchen, warm the water, and prepare the meal so that the visitor may partake of it and be energized. It is also an African spirit where I come from in Zambia, there was a tradition of growing some crops, edible crops, along the roads, the footpaths, so that the sojourners, people who are traveling from distant areas, they can stop by and pluck out the tuber of the cassava and eat as an empowerment on the journey. They do that without counting the cost of who passes through that road. But out of generosity, they provide for the people who are traveling on different roads. This is an aspect of the African heart. And this is what we have seen and witnessed and experienced here in Tanzania from the time that we arrived. If I came with 80 kgs, I could, could, I could be probably hitting 87 kg because of you, and I'm grateful for that. This is the warmness of African and also the generosity of Tanzanians, the oasis of peace. We would want to pray for our neighboring countries that they taste the stability and the love of conflicts and fighting. The resistance with which you, are, you have as Tanzanians. We are not saying our brothers and sisters in those areas are not trying. They are trying, but there could be people who are so egoistic in their tendencies and are bringing trouble in the land. But I would want to reemphasize the point of generosity, giving out. We are told that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. A giver that reaches out receives more in return. And that is what we are encouraged to do. To be kind and also to identify with our brothers and sisters. In the second reading that St. Paul writes to the Colossians, he says we have received the word of God. And this word of God has taken root in our lives. And that word of God is our Lord Jesus Christ who lived by example per excellence and died 
for the love of humanity. And we're told even we who have been called to mission to witness to the love of Christ, there will be moments of turbulences, the moments of trial and tribulation. We should not give up but remain steadfast and witness to the truth that we have found in our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is an encouragement that whenever we meet trouble and also difficulties and challenges in our mission, let us not give up but look on and remain faithful to your call, come what me. And that is the spirit of a missionary. That is the spirit of the soldier of Christ. In the gospel reading, our Lord Jesus Christ visits the house of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. And as he enters into the house, Mary goes and sits with the Lord. She sits at the feet of the Lord, meaning she is reading herself to be spoken to, to be catechized, to be a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. She takes the priority of listening to the Lord, so that in what she does thereafter, she will be inspired by the grace of the Master. Martha with generosity and openness of heart, goes straight to the kitchen and starts preparing the meal. A generous and African spirit. But the Lord Jesus Christ wants to create a priority that let what we do be inspired by the word of God. So priority is to receive the word of God. So that what we do is emanating from the love of Christ. Emanating and coming from that love and the experience of the Lord in our lives. And then we shall go out, just as we are doing here. We have come to worship the Lord, to listen to his word, that he may speak to us. He may help us to reflect on the past week, how we lived, the challenges and the troubles that we met. And now this is a moment of pondering, a moment of pausing, a moment of serenity, of sitting down, listening to the word of God. Inspired by that word of God, we are ready to go out for mission for this coming week, to go and do our best. And this is what the Lord does. He is not in any way disregarding the generosity of Martha, but rather to create a clear dichotomy between the priority and also what we need to do next. And this is what the message of our Lord Jesus Christ says. It says, as we go out, let us first be converted from within by the word of God. Let it pierce our hearts like a double-edged sword, so that feeling that and the presence of God in our lives, then we show and share that with our brothers and sisters. And this is the message of the word of God today. May I take this opportunity, therefore, to also share the message of our fathers, their Messiah bishops. We came here in Tanzania to celebrate with you, my dear people, our 20th Amesia plenary session. That talks about the environmental impact on integral human development, a common way of living, to be the brother's keeper, the sister's keeper, to take care of the environment to reorganize our relationship with our God who has created us and with ourselves and our brothers and sisters and the rest of creation. Creation also talks to us 
that if you, you do not heighten this relationship, you are going to suffer the calumny. And in some ways, already we are affected. We see our countries going through the seasons that are unpredictable, experiencing the drought, the floods, the hunger, and all other upheavals of pollution. And this is a call by His Holiness Pope Francis that let us pause, look back at our behavior, how we have lived, and pledge to do better in the future. Let us take care of Mother Earth so that we help it to sustain and to continue keeping us as our home. Therefore, in doing this, it calls for a disposition of heart that cares for others, cares for Mother Earth, and also considers the plight of other people. And therefore, I would want to take this moment to read the message as it is stating. This communique is issued by the bishops of Amesia on the 20th Amesia Plenary Assembly, which brought together cardinals, bishops, archbishops, bishops, priests, religious men and women, and the laity, and all other delegates, our cooperating partners, coming also from the conferences of Ethiopia, Eritrea, Kenya, Malawi, Tanzania, Uganda, Sudan and South Sudan, Zambia, and the two affiliate members of Djibouti and Somalia. The plenary reflected on a theme which is inspired by Pope Francis in his encyclical letter of May 2015, Laudato Si meaning, may he be praised, standing for the care of our common home. It is the title of the letter which draws its inspiration from St. Francis' canticle of praise to God, the creator of all things, as reflected the prophet Daniel Chapter 3, verses 56 to 88. Pope Francis goes further to critic the irresponsible human behavior, which is globally contributing to the environmental degradation and the cry of Mother Earth and the cry of the poor. We want to express gratitude during the plenary. We have been encouraged by the keynote address made by His Eminence, Louis Antonio Cardinal Tagle, the prefect for the dicastery for the evangelization of peoples, who underscored that lack of caring for other people coexists with behaviors and practices that damage creation, and that when there is lack of integral human development, fraternity suffers, end of quote. We express our gratitude to Tanzania Episcopal Conference for hosting this plenary, to the President of the United Republic of Tanzania, Her Excellence Madam Samia Sulu Hassan, and her government for the culture of hospitality and for the spirit of church state collaborative relationship that we have enjoyed and witnessed. Our message on the theme of the plenary. We, the Amesia bishops, acknowledge that despite the success stories shared on the implementation of the Audato C message in the region. Member conferences have also faced challenges which need new pastoral strategies so that promoting ecological justice, 
and mitigating climate change are not mere words, but concrete and practical journeying together on the path of conversion as proposed in the seven Laudato Si goals. Ecological crisis in Amesia region. We acknowledge that there is an ecological crisis which to a larger extent is a result of human behavior. In the region, the ecological crisis is now evidenced by the negative effects of the climate change, which include droughts, floods, cyclones, among other disasters. All these are posing a growing threat to the social economic development of our countries and to the sustainability of people's livelihood in Eastern Africa. The scramble for natural resources has often resulted in two conflicts and displacement of innocent people, the defenseless poor, and causing wars. wait for that sound to die off a little bit, which make the cry of the earth and of the poor even louder, expression of concern. We express deep concern over the rate at which forests are being depleted due to use of firewood, charcoal burning, and our infrastructure construction activities while the people are not making enough efforts to replant trees and taking care of the earth as we utilize the fruits of the earth. We are equally concerned about the poorly regulated mining, extractive industry activities, all these are contributing to the pollution and environmental degradation in Amesia region. We are aware that addressing these issues touches on economic justice and fairness. And as such, they cannot be adequately addressed without providing alternatives, such as promoting the use of other sources of energy like solar, wind energy, and other means of livelihood. Commendation. Pope St. Paul VI remarked in his encyclical letter, Evangelii Nunciadi, of 1975, that modern people listen more to witnesses than to teachers. And if they do listen to teachers, it is because they are first witnesses. We commend the United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP, governments, diocese, Catholic associations, men and women, and all people of goodwill from our families who are already taking affirmative actions to protect the environment such as promoting tree planting, campaigning for the cleaning of our cities from within, from the thin plastic, and for effective waste management systems in our countries. However, we trace the urgent need for more goals, for more models in a Messiah whose exemplary lifestyles will highlight the efforts to respond to the cry of Mother Earth. Sensitization. We reiterate Pope Francis's call for dialogue and aggressive sensitization campaign at the basic community level in order to raise awareness and improve 
our communication with the people on the care for environment, which must include bringing the message to the small Christian communities and the families. Education. We emphasize the role of the Catholic social teaching on environmental care and the importance of integrating eco-education and ecological activities in the education programs for the empowerment of the youth and the children in all government education facilities in our houses of formation to priesthood and consecrated life. The youth must be trained and nurtured to become ambassadors of good ecological practices. Community mobilization. We also underline the need for the Catholic Church in Amesia region to mobilize the communities on the care for environment and mindset change. And since climate change effects are affecting every member of the society, we commit to partner with governments, other denominations of our brothers and sisters who are Christians, and the interfaith with other faith communities, families, the private, the, the private sector, non-government organizations, community development organizations, and all people of goodwill. Advocacy. We underscore the need for all conferences in Amesia region to strengthen their advocacy role towards environmental care policies and laws that will curb the negative human practices, but in a way that is sensitive to the welfare of their people as guided by the principles of social justice. And in conclusion, we the Catholic bishops in the Amesia region firmly make a commitment to respond to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor in fulfillment of our God-given mandate. God willed that man should cultivate and care for the earth. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And in, rec in recognition of this greater calling, I urge all the pastoral agents of the Catholic Church and the people of goodwill to be stewards of our environment and the natural resources, not only for the benefit of our current generation, but for the future generations, on whose behalf we must nurture the environment. A message of solidarity. We want to assure our brothers and sisters in the region and beyond who are affected by the diverse effects of climate change such as floods and drought and the cyclones, that they are not alone. We accompany them. And we shall employ our strategies to mobilize the government and other actors who can come to their aid. And in our little way, also continue to make a contribution as we have done in the past in order to identify with our brothers and sisters. We prayerfully and in a caring spirit stand with you, our struggling brothers and sisters. Keep the faith and remain faithful. Our prayer for peace goes to the member Episcopal conferences experiencing conflicts, strife, and civil wars in Ethiopia, Eritrea, Sudan, South Sudan, and communities affected by conflict in other parts of Africa and the world. We have some of these brothers and sisters who are running from the war-torn countries 
here in Tanzania and also in all the Amesia countries. These are our brothers and sisters. Where possible, let us take care of them. We are grateful some time back what the Episcopal Conference of Tanzania did to some of our brothers and sisters from Ethiopia who were locked up here, released, but they had no means of transport to go back home. They were assisted through the intervention of our bishops and you are brothers and sisters. That is the spirit. Let us take care of one another. And that is the spirit of generosity and thoughtfulness. Finally, we pray for free, fair, and credible and peaceful elections in Kenya. As the country goes to the poll on the 9th of August, 2022, next month, we pray that let there be peace before, during, and after the elections. Tumusifu Yesu Christu.